paired difference of two means. Okay. Actually, paired is the point here. Okay, this is the other thing that a lot of people have trouble with, is trying to work out, if we, we're talking about the difference between two means, there are two different things that you can do in Excel. You can do the, um, where's it gone here? Is it big enough? You can see here we've got t-test paired sample for means and we've got t-test two sample assuming equal variances and t-test two sample assuming unequal variances. Okay, we will only be using the first two. We do not use the unequal variances one because we're assuming our variances are equal all the time. But when do we know whether it is paired or not paired? Okay, when data is paired, it is the same sample done twice. And a really usual example of that is some sort of um, before or after thing. If you want to find out if a fitness program works, you take one sample of people, you randomly choose them, you get them to do, you measure their fitness, you put them through the, and put that down, you put them through the program, and you measure their fitness at the end. So for each person, you have two different measures. But those measures belong together. You wouldn't go giving my before with somebody else's after. It's important that they stay together. And that's what it means by paired, is that the, the way that they're written in the column is important. And in fact, what we're interested in is not so much the differences in the means, is what we're really interested in is, is there a difference? And what you do is you find the difference for each person, and then you find whether that difference is different from zero. So a paired one is when there are two measurements on the same sample, so e.g. fitness, before, and after. Okay, but now, say I decided, oh, look, I'm in a hurry. I haven't got time to put people through a program. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test 20 people who haven't done the program, and I'm going to test 20 people who have done the program. Is that paired or is it independent? Hands up if you think it's paired. Hands up if you think it's independent. You're right, it's independent because there's two different lots of people. Even though there's 20 in one and 20 in the other, they're still independent because they do not match up from one to the other. So that is why we would use the independent samples on that one. So when we're doing paired differences, we use, we're looking to see is it different from zero. You use that one I just showed you. And the p-value, like the other one we get, you get two p-values, the one or two-tailed. Now, the one and two-tailed has nothing to do with where it is paired or not. The one and two-tailed is about whether we are saying that there is a difference or an increase. Okay, so say I'm talking about the fitness one, and my alternative hypothesis is that people who've done the program are fitter. Is that going to be one-tailed or two-tailed? Okay, I'll say it again. I've got two lots of people, and... Actually, no, I'll do it with one lot of people. One lot of people, I measure them before and after, and I want to see my null hypothesis is that there is no difference or that they get worse. And my alternative hypothesis is that they improve. Their fitness improves from the beginning to the later. Okay, is that one-tailed or two-tailed? Okay, hold up the number of fingers <laughs> that nicely that you think it is. One, you're right, it is one-tailed. Because we're saying, do they get fitter? It's just one direction. If I'm not sure whether they might get worse, then it would be two-tailed because we're not sure which direction they're going to go in. So the tails has nothing to do with the, whether it's paired or independent. It is to do with whether we have some direction or not. And that is it. Lots to hang in your brains there. Good luck with that, and I'll see you tomorrow.